worst housing inflation by far in the G7. The worst housing inflation in Canadian history. The whole world is looking in disbelief on the wacko liberalization of drugs that is destroying lives under Justin Trudeau after nine years. I always say what I mean and mean what I say. I make promises that I can keep. And right now we are, um, our country is broke after nine years of Trudeau. Who so as you can imagine, I'm inheriting a dumpster fire. I'm and tired of politicians just announcing that they're going to spend money without figuring out how they're going to pay for it. I was embarrassed to see our Prime Minister treated like a human piñata by the rest of the NATO countries. Um, after nine years of Trudeau and the NDP, everything costs more. Work doesn't pay. You make it, Trudeau takes it. Housing costs have doubled with the worst housing inflation by far in the G7. The worst housing inflation in Canadian history. Incomes have fallen 40% short of housing costs increases. Rent has doubled. Mortgage payments have doubled. The needed down payment has doubled. Here in Montreal, rent has actually tripled. When I was housing minister nine years ago, you know how much it cost to rent a one bedroom here? 700 bucks. Now it's $2,200 in just nine years. The Munch people of Montreal have given Justin Trudeau their trust. What did he give them in return? He tripled their rent. He sent people to the food bank. 25% of Canadians are now living in poverty. A, four, a quarter of kids are going to school hungry, according to the federal government's own data. We have the worst economy in the G7 by far. It has shrunk more since 2019 than any other G7 country. In fact, our per capita GDP is now smaller than it was before COVID. We are one of the only countries in the world that has that distinction. Our money is leaving, a half trillion dollars of our investment has left to the United States to escape Trudeau's taxes uh, and red tape. Meanwhile, we have the second slowest building permits in the OECD, which is driving up home building costs. What does Trudeau do about that? He gives more and more of our money to incompetent, radical NDP liberal mayors who block home building and drive up homelessness. Everywhere we go in Canada, it's the same story. 35 homeless encampments in Halifax, 256 homeless encampments in Toronto. 50 of them have opened in three months alone. Some people are even calling these homeless encampments Trudeau towns to reflect the fact that we never had these places before him. And here at this beautiful school, we're seeing children terrorized by drugs, by potential violence, by gross sex acts, by needles and other danger. What we're seeing here is a radical, wacko liberalization experiment of drug legalization that has driven up overdose deaths and crime and now threatens once safe neighborhoods. Despite the failed experiment that's destroying lives, Trudeau is doubling down by allowing the Benoit Lab drug injection site in Montreal located just steps away from this elementary school and this park which is supposed to be safe for children. Parents have raised the alarm bell about this disaster, saying their children are afraid to go to school. Some kids have even witnessed indecent acts on the sidewalk and have been shouted at. Residents warn of a influx of drug dealers who've been drawn into the area since the site opened. Montrealers no longer recognize the once safe communities that they used to live in. Now they see homelessness, crime, chaos, drug abuse, which have become com uh, common. Montreal's NDP Liberal Mayor has even insisted Montrealers should just learn to live with this chaos and this danger. She says we should just accept homelessness and the Trudeau government refuses to requ directly reject Montreal's, the, the city of Montreal's radical request to legalize 
hard drugs in this city, even after the experiment led to a 400% increase in overdose deaths in BC where it was tried. And just this week, the London Telegraph, a famous international publication called Vancouver, the world's capital of fentanyl overdoses. The whole world is looking in disbelief on the wacko liberalization of drugs that is destroying lives under Justin Trudeau after nine years. And so I am here today to stand up for this community because none of the liberal MPs in the area are willing to do it. Mark Miller is supposed to be the MP here. What is he doing? He's nowhere. He's doing nothing. Just like Anthony Housefather is nowhere and doing nothing to protect the Jewish people against the rampant anti-Semitism that has unleashed on the streets of Montreal and across Canada, and his house father is protecting this recent radical that they appointed to head up the Human Rights Tribunal. His house father votes to give money to UNRWA terrorists, and he stands by Trudeau, who's the most anti-Israel prime minister in Canadian history. The Montreal Liberal MPs do nothing for their community, so I am here to fight for Montrealers in this wonderful city. And I'm today calling for the Trudeau government to close its drug den. Under Section 56.1 of the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, the government has the power to accept or refuse a supervised consumption site like Maison Benoit Laube. Justin Trudeau must immediately shut down this hard drug injection site, this drug den, to protect our children, reassure, reassure families, and ensure the safety of all Quebecers and Canadians. It's time for a common sense conservative government that will ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Let's bring it home. We'll move to questions. Violette Quentin, Radio Canada, CBC. Could you please answer first in French, then in English? Thank you. In recent months, Montreal has heard uh, talk of cohabitation in emergency sheltered uh, in emergency shelters. It's cohabitation between citizens, authorities, and shelter residents. You're opposed to supervised injection projects, uh, so what solution do you suggest for addicts who need help? The alternative we propose is treatment to put an end to their addiction, their addiction to drugs. The only solution is to stop using hard drugs. The Liberals, the radical liberals in of the radical left have created an industry of bureaucrats, lobbyists, activists who are taking advantage of people's misery, of addicts' misery, and who want to perpetuate it. They are inventing new terms. Now it is the term co-dwelling. People are supposed to live with uh, people using heroin and fentanyl and engaging in sex acts and sexual acts in parks. This is an absolute hell that has been created by liberal bloc politicians like Valérie Plante and uh, Justin Trudeau. We need massive change. We need common sense. We need to put criminals in jail, ban hard drugs, provide genuine treatment for people to put an end to their drug addiction. That is common sense, and that's what we will do. Creating a cohabitation. This is the, the, the latest Orwellian uh, terminology that the radical, wacko, block liberal politicians like Plant and Trudeau are inventing. And what they mean by that is that kids should have to cohabitate with people who are using crack, heroin, cocaine, and other hard drugs in their play parks like this. Um, this is total wacko. 
kids should not have to cohabitate with hard drug use and crime. That's not Canada. Um, what it is leading to is more danger and more violence. And by the way, there is an, an entire industry of bureaucracies and activists and politicians who are profiting from this misery and want to perpetuate it. And they are pumping more and more money into keeping it going. I will end it. My common sense plan will ban the hard drugs. It will put the money into treatment rather than into handing out narcotics. We will break the dependence on drugs and we will bring our loved ones home drug free. And let me just close off by, by quoting a local resident who describes what it's like to have this so-called cohabitation that the uh, wacko radical uh, mayor and prime minister are pushing. This is from Michael McKenzie, Canadian research chair in child well-being and professor of social work and pediatrics at the University of McGill. Before the center opened, community resistance was narrowly focused on the drug injection site. The discussion sadly now extends to the entire facility, risking to throw the baby out with the bathwater. There is no evidence in the literature I have read that, that co-mingling transitional housing with a supervised injection inhalation day, uh, uh, site is pr a prudent move in supporting recovery of those newly housed. I make no apologies because that I want my cho I don't want my children seeing sex acts on the way home from school. I feel no shame in saying it is unacceptable to have people publicly masturbating or assaulting neighbors. Communities much like the families who comprise them can be both compassionate and set firm boundaries about unacceptable public behavior that harms people and traumatizes children. It is compassionate to demand more from politicians and the Benoit Laub Center. That's Michael McKenzie, Canada Research Chair in Child Wellbeing and Professor of Social Work at the, and Pediat Pediatrics at the University of McGill. That sounds like common sense to me. On va passer à la prochaine question. Next question. Point Journal, Canadian Press. Uh, if you can answer in English and French as well. So, on the subject of NATO, why won't you commit to meeting the NATO target instead of saying you would work toward meeting the spending commitment? The difference between being, the difference being saying you're going to do something versus working toward or trying to do something. I always say what I mean and mean what I say. I make promises that I can keep. And right now, we are, um, our country is broke after nine years of Trudeau, who's doubled our national debt ballooned our bureaucracy, caused the worst inflation in 40 years, driven 25% of our population into poverty, and 25% of our children into hunger. So as you can imagine, I'm inheriting a dumpster fire when it comes to the budget. So every time I make a financial commitment, I'm going to make sure I've pulled out my calculator and done all the math. Because people are sick and tired of politicians just announcing that they're going to spend money without figuring out how they're going to pay for it. Now, obviously, the Trudeau has demolished our military. Um, and my common sense approach is I will cut foreign aid to dictators, terrorists, and multinational bureaucracies. I will crack down on corruption, back office bureaucracy, and procurement uh, bungles. And I will use the savings from that to reinforce our military. We will buy equipment based on best value to get, make our money go further, as we did during the previous Conservative government, which re-equipped our forces rapidly, on time and on budget, to fight in Afghanistan. And I will replace the woke culture with a warrior culture so that we can get recruitment back up and running, we can recruit the next generation of soldiers, sailors, and airmen. Thank you. En français aussi, s'il vous plaît. 
I will inherit a financial dumpster fire after Justin Trudeau doubled the national debt, doubled the cost of housing, caused the worst inflation in 40 years, forced 25% uh, of Canadians into poverty. I will have to look at the budget carefully before making any promises. I will have to pull out my calculator before making any promises because Canadians are fed up with politicians who make promises without knowing how they will foot the bill. What I said about the armed forces is yes, Justin Trudeau has destroyed the armed forces because the very small budget he has provided is being wasted on mismanagement of uh, acquisitions on woke projects that have nothing to do with the military and on bureaucracy, which has uh, kept uh, growing. I will cut foreign aid, which is sent to dictators, uh, terrorists, and multinational bureaucracies. I will put an end to corruption and mismanagement in acquisitions and procurement and I will cut bureaucracy to find the savings that we can use to rebuild our military. We will rebuild the military, eliminate waste to support our soldiers and provide them with the best equipment possible. Thank you. Next question. Eric Andrew G, Globe and Mail. Um, your party hasn't actually said what your policy towards safe injection sites will be. So you want to close this one, but will you close others? What, what, what will you do around safe injection sites across the country? I will be closing them. We will close safe, safe injection sites next to schools, playgrounds, uh, anywhere else that they endanger the public and take lives. We will defund. By the way, they're not safe injection sites. I'm sorry. I used your dishonest language. See, you just repeat the language that is fed to you by the government. Are you a CP? Are you a CP? A CP? Who are you with? Globe and Mail. You're with the Globe and Mail. You guys repeat the same language you get from the, the liberal, the, the radical liberal NDP activists and bureaucracies. You call them safe. How can they be safe? You think it's safe? when a bullet comes flying out of one of these sites to kill a mother in Toronto, do you think that's safe? You think it's safe to have people using crack and heroin and cocaine ne next to a playground like this? You think that's safe? It's not safe. Supervised injection sites. They're drug dens. They're drug dens. And they've made everything worse. Everywhere they've been done, they've made everything worse. And I know what you'll do now. You'll now go and call the same bureaucrats who caused the, the chaos, and you'll call them experts. The people who caused the 400% increase in drug overdose deaths in Vancouver, you're going to call them experts. They are expert at destroying communities and ending lives, but at perpetuating their own industries, because that's what they are. They are industries that want to expand, and the only way they can continue to exist is by keeping the misery going. So they're not safe. They are unsafe injection sites, they are drug dens, and we oppose them. The Supreme Court has been very clear that you, there's not, these radical bureaucrats don't have the right to open these drug dens anywhere they want. The court made it clear that there are reasonable restrictions that can be placed on them, and that includes playgrounds. So, what so what I'll be, I, I've told you my policy, I'm against the drug dens next to children's playgrounds, schools, other places where people who are vulnerable in the community live, we will defund them. We will not, there will not be a single taxpayer dollar of, from the poly of government going to drug dens. Every single penny will go to treatment and recovery services to bring our loved ones home drug free. Thank you. Okay, merci. Nice try. Nice try. The Supreme Court didn't say that. See, I know what you're trying to do. The Supreme Court well, didn't. I'm no, I, I'm, I, I'm giving you my answer. The Supreme Court did not say that, that, that there can be. It's, it's okay. The Supreme Court didn't say that you can have a drug den wherever you want. It said that there are reasonable restrictions that can be placed 
to stop them from opening up in, place, in, in locations that endanger the community or where there is community opposition. That's what the Supreme Court actually said. Now, I know that wacko politicians and the liberals and the NDP and their supporters in the media want to make it sound like there is a constitutional obligation that we allow these drug dens anywhere they want to go up. That is not true. That is the opposite of true. We have the power under Section 56.1 of the Controlled Substance, Drugs and Substances Act to reject these, these drug dens and shut them down where they endanger the public, and that's what I will do. Can you please answer in French as well? First of all, these are not safe injection sites. Uh, and, uh, and giving drugs to people next to, to primary schools is not safe. It is dangerous. Let's not repeat the terminology and the rhetoric of those radical politicians such as uh, Justin Trudeau and Valérie Plante. The Supreme Court has clearly indicated that it is not an entitlement uh, for any, any uh, corporation or outfit to open those so-called safe injection sites just anywhere. There can be reasonable restrictions, especially in areas where there are children or where the community is endangered, vulnerable, or resisting these uh, sites. Uh, so we will close those so-called uh, safe injection sites I will stop funding those centers. They will not be receiving one penny from the federal government, and that money will be reinvested in helping people who are trying to break their dependence uh, to drugs. To drugs. Last question. Just to go back to NATO for a moment, I'm wondering about your reaction to the fairly open criticism Canada came under this week and whether you would feel pressure to meet that uh, 2% target? First of all, it's clear now Justin Trudeau is seen as an absolute joke on the world stage. Um, he was a... The, I was embarrassed to see our Prime Minister treated like a human piñata by the rest of the NATO countries. Um, they look upon him with total and complete ridicule. Um, Canadians are tired of being embarrassed by a prime minister who prances around and preens, lectures the world without doing his part. Common sense conservatives will cut back on foreign aid to dictators, terrorists, and multinational bureaucracies. We will cut off back, back office bureaucracy in the Defense Department. We will end the botched procurement that has led to billions of dollars of waste, and we will put all of that money into rebuilding our forces and supporting the front lines of our soldiers, sailors, and airmen. I would add that when the pre previous Conservative government was in office, we weren't hearing these criticisms. Why? Because we were delivering. It wasn't because we were spending more. It's because we were delivering more. We were able to buy equipment off the shelf, quickly put it into theater, and pound for pound, do more to fight the Taliban in the most dangerous part of the world than almost any other country in NATO. And so the Americans and our other allies were very grateful that we were doing more than our part, regardless of what it financially cost the budget. Now, because Trudeau has wasted so much of the money we do spend, and even, even the money we are putting to work is being wasted and, and we're not getting the results and therefore our standing on the world is in decline. The other thing he's failed to do that I will reverse is use our resources as a geostrategic force. The Japanese, the Greeks, the Germans have all asked for our natural gas so they can break their dependence on Putin. Trudeau says there's no business case. The Americans have built seven natural gas liquefaction facilities since Trudeau took office. The Qataris have doubled their production. The Germans built an import terminal in 150 days from concept to completion. Obviously, there's a business case. I will be exporting Canada's natural resources. 
particularly to break European dependence on Putin and turn dollars for dictators into paychecks for our people. En français aussi, s'il vous plaît. Justin Trudeau est vu comme une clown. Justin Trudeau is seen with ridicule by his counterpart on the on the world scene, and uh, he is not respected by world leaders. And it was an embarrassment for us to see how 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 other other heads of states ridiculing our minister who is going from one country to one place to another um, and he's delivering woke speeches in order to impress his uh, Hollywood friends. And, and everybody in political and diplomatic circles is, is laughing at him. And he is squandering uh, our money, which is, which is squandered because it is poorly managed uh, And, and because it goes through corrupt circuits, and, and he is wasting the money that we use uh, under foreign aid, and I want to, to cut that aid uh, to, to, to dictators, world bureaucracies, and reinvest that money in our military. We'll have more value for uh, the money that we spend for equipment and that we spend uh, for uh, our procurement uh, for our soldiers. So we'll be using our resources as a leverage, as a lever to, to become a force in the world. We have the fifth, the fifth flow, available flow of natural gas in order to break the dependence of European countries on Russian gas. Well, Justin Trudeau thinks, thinks that, that We should. We wants to use that money to to buy to buy to buy weapons from Putin. I want to give jobs to the Canadian.